more and more has been coming out that the Hornets are getting pretty set on taking Brandon Miller at two. Um, I don't agree. Which makes things more and more interesting for Portland and Houston at four um, with potential for trades, potential for either of those teams getting um, what in many years would be a consensus number one guy to a lot of people in Scoot Henderson. Um, it, falling to it past two, um, which leads me to a question that I wanted to ask you that I've seen a lot of people talk about because of these rumors, which is at what point do you take fit into account when you're drafting, especially when you're in like the top five or top three picks? Do you always just take best player available, right? So if you're in this case, right, you're the Hornets. You're concerned about drafting another point guard because you have LaMelo. Even though to, in most people's eyes, Scoot Henderson is the better prospect, mm-hmm. better talent. So at what point does it make sense to go for fit over talent? To go for fit over talent when the talent isn't at that top level. You know what I mean? I feel like definitely these picks one through three, you don't go for fit these this early. In this draft specifically, probably one through five, because there's a lot of good players in this draft. I feel like if it's if it's a draft that it's like it ha- yeah, it has one top guy, maybe two top guys, and the rest are like they're gonna be solid NBA players, and maybe you go for fit. But when the guy has the potential to be the leader of your franchise, or at least has the talent to be like a franchise leader, you don't go for fit. Like that doesn't make sense to me. Like you said it before. This the same the only reason they have LaMelo Ball is because the Warriors went for fit. Right. Instead of going for the talent. It's like you don't go for fit when you're at that point of the draft. If this is picks ten through fifteen, fifteen to tw- through twenty, okay, go for fit. That's fine. But it's like you don't go for fit this early in the draft. Like I don't get it. I feel like that's how you end up making a big mistake like the Warriors did. So that that to me that doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I think there's been so many instances where it just is it feels like a lose lose situation in, in in a lot of these cases because if the talent does turn out to, you know, pan out to most of their potential or exceeds the, whatever they were expected to be, the pick before them is always going to be looked at as the wrong pick. As Portland at Portland itself, as Portland with, with the Michael Jordan draft. It was right. a good idea to go for fit. That's like, exactly what I'm Portland. talking about. God was, I just was re-watching The Last Dance, and they were like, okay, Hakeem is number one. That was like clear cut. Cool. Mm-hmm. Portland has Clyde. They don't want to take another shooting guard, so they mm-hmm. went with the center, and they took Sam Bowie. And then passed up on, at minimum, like second best player of all time because and they then, for fit. And then years later, to win, his cha- win a championship – who'd he beat? Portland and Clyde Drexler because Clyde got dominated. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd rather have Michael Jordan. So it's like, don't don't go for fit that early in the draft, bro. Please don't. Just yeah. draft the best player. I think the Hornets, I'm, and I haven't watched much of, much of Brandon Miller, so I'm not saying he's a bad player or anything, but I just think, I have seen Scoot. I just think he's, like we said, in any other draft, a number one overall pick caliber of player. And you don't pass, you don't pass up on that just for fit. It's interesting, like, being – or, like, just following people that do draft analysis. There always reaches a point in the the off season, like, after the college season is over, once, like, we're a few months out of the draft, people really start putting together mocks, doing, like, real deep analysis, getting everything situated with their final rankings. There always is a large group of people who overthink it and ranking mm-hmm. like what has been consensus for months like for so long it was Wemby school easy no questions right. asked like that is the once like the draft starts at three right we already know who's going one and two and then I don't know where you got people saying well you know I have Brandon Miller at two or you know oh the Thompson twins one of them might be higher than schools I've seen people drop school down to like Five. I'm school like, who goes to five? That would be Detroit. Would be oh my <laughs> god, 
Like, oh my god, they just went from the worst draft lottery luck ever to we still got our we got a better a better than we thought we was gonna get. Right. That'd have been crazy. Um but it's like there's just there's no way that would happen. So it's like what you the people start nitpicking and trying to find things and like talk themselves into these arguments to put people higher than again we've seen it for months now it was it was not even a question why are mm-hmm. we trying to make it a question when there's there's not even been a change like there's no more games that were played you're just like re-watching the film over and over trying to find something to convince yourself otherwise um and people latch on to these little things and you know now they they got to be different right it has to be changed but um i think look, if i'm the hornets i don't care that i have Lamelo. i'm taking scoop i think the two of them could probably play together yeah, exactly and even if they can't that's a you deal with that later <laughs> you, you can do, never have too much talent bro right you, you can never have talent, too much talent the worst the absolute worst thing that happens you trade him for people that fit exactly so it's like You'd rather have Scoot and be able to trade him than not have Scoot. Cause it's like, and then say Scoot turns out to be this great player that we all think he is, and say Brandon Miller not is not a bust, but like he isn't the player that you draft that you would have drafted at number two. Now you're stuck in a horrible spot. It's like it doesn't make sense to me. But right. yeah, that they, they always that happens with all drafts in every sport. They just happen with this football draft with the quarterbacks. It was like. Four different quarterbacks people thought was going to go first, even though the consensus at the end of the season was Bryce Young one, CJ Stroud two. And then come draft talk time, bro, every combination in the Anthony world. Anthony Richardson, Will it, Levis, like every everybody. combination. Yep. It was like, oh, maybe they'll just pass up on a quarterback and go defense. Like, bro, what are we what are we talking about? That, that doesn't even make sense, bro. Like, people just be bored in the offseason. I think that's what it is. People want to be bored. They want to make change, like you said. They want to be different, like you said. It's like, bro, we could just keep the consensus the way it is, bro. Right. Because there's no need to overthink some of these things. It's no need to overthink some of these things because history has told us that when you do, you're going to regret it five plus years down the line when you're like the Warriors looking back saying, I can guarantee you that whole organization wishes they took LaMelo and say to, instead of James Wiseman. And that's mm-hmm. no shade to Wiseman. Because I think he got the short end of the stick in, in Golden State, but end of the day, like right now, just based on what we've seen from the two of them, every organization takes Lamelo ten times out of ten. You you figure mm-hmm. it out, you make it work. So exactly. like you can make it work with Lamelo and Scoot. Because I guarantee you, if Lamelo had been in Golden State, they would figure something out. One hundred percent. So one hundred percent. It's crazy because they make like. You made the consensus when the season was happening. So you're watching these guys play. What between when the season ends to now has changed? They're not playing basketball. Like, what is changing? Like, I'd I'd understand if, like, Brandon Miller was still playing and he was killing everybody, then you're like, oh, maybe we should take him. They're not playing basketball. You ended their season with him at three. What changed from, like, what changed from then? And I get it. Like, the season ends, you do deep dives on film. You're watching – you know, game tape of them over and over, and you find and you see different things. But it it just it feels like out of nowhere, like you said, they just got to shake it up, got to shake mm-hmm. it up, and it's like it. It wasn't even a debate. Like we were, like, like I said, genuinely it was like school is a number one pick in any other year, but this year, mm-hmm. like he's that type of level of talent. So how does it become that he's sliding past three? Right. With nothing, nothing different to show for it. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. like he came out, had bad games, struggled doing X, Y, Z. Had off the court stuff. Like, no, it's right. the same. Nothing's changed, bro. So, yeah, look, I, I'll always be a big, big believer in you always like 99.999% of the time are taking the talent over the fit unless you are like the NB, defending NBA champion and you had traded for a pick that all of a sudden becomes like the number three pick in the draft. And it's like, Mm -hmm. right. Like it's a little bit tougher there. And even then it's like, why not just take the guy and figure it out? Like it always seems like if you believe in your coaching staff, you believe in the the philosophies, the development staff, y'all will make it work. 
type. Y'all can make it work. So. Just draft the best player, bro. It's that simple. That, that's the whole point of the draft is to draft the best player. Like, is that? It's a simple process, bro. Right. 